Please welcome New York's own Sophia Chang to the Hang Time stage. So I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of really amazing artwork. I know the guy just that went up before me had some amazing motion graphics. My slides aren't as interesting. They're actually more so still, so bear with me. Um, but instead of actually talking too much about my work, because we have Google and Instagram, I'm going to talk a little bit more about my motive behind my work, because I'm sure this room is filled of very talented people um, with various skill sets um, that we're always working on refining and improving. Um, but I'd like to chat a little bit about my motive uh, behind the work maybe you've seen or you haven't seen. And I can go through um, a, a, a few examples of my work, but I really got to go back, way back, back to my roots. And I'm originally from Queens, New York. If you've ever had a pleasure of taking the 7 train, or the next time you're on the 7 train, take a look at the people around you. Every person that's sitting next to each other is speaking a different language. And that's actually my comfort zone in terms of this very beautifully diverse environment where in elementary school I had a chance to try my friends' foods, it was different cuisines, you go to their homes, I grew up Christian, some people wouldn't pray before their meals, and it's just really just experiencing different cultures at such a really early young age, I realize has a huge influence in terms of my priorities as a creative now. Um, and my early influences were uh, hip hop and sneakers and street art, before any of these terms really existed as much as far as street culture goes, I was just a Queens girl who was living in the bubble and just really gravitated towards these things because this is just what my friends and I were into. And here's uh, literally some photos to really prove that I'm not lying about this, that I would go to my friend's house after school, her sister would braid my hair, um, we'd watch Mary J. Blige on MTV, and I got my first Jordan ones. They were the patent ones. I don't know if anyone remembers those. Um, that's also a jersey dress. <laughs> if anyone's from New York, they probably remember how a jersey dress looks like. It's a North Carolina 23 jersey. Yay. Um, and I also wore a lot of um, Mark Echo and really shopped in menswear, well, I guess boys wear early on back in the day, just because I gravitated towards that style and always had an approach of, hey, everyone's thinking this way. How do I think differently? And that was always kind of this challenge that I gave myself. So I went to Parsons. I'm kind of dating myself here. Um, but I went to Parsons, and I actually majored in illustration. And so if any of you have a background in illustration, you understand that in the curriculum, we generally learn a lot about defining your style, you know, enter into the Society of Illustrators, or AIGA, and all these amazing um, creative platforms. I unfortunately never won any awards, but I had a lot of energy, and so I was always looking for different ways to be able to stay um, entertained. So I worked on, um, let's see, I worked on a lot of different internships outside of my illustration focus. I also audited classes outside of my major in packaging design, motion graphics, web design, web coding. I also interned with a fine artist named Ryan McGinnis, mainly cleaning his silk screens. Um, I interned at Complex Magazine when it used to be a publication, and there I learned how to design magazines and use InDesign. I also worked in their digital marketing department, learning about how proposals, if Budweiser wanted to buy digital ads, really just how does that business side work and that kind of um, orchestrated experience between advertising, editorial, uh, design department, illustration department, if any, and how everything translates to media as well. This was this time around the recession where, you know, someone might be at work and immediately their desk is empty the next day, which is very frightening. Um, so, you know, I realized just, get, just getting, just having a skill to be able to draw in New York is very difficult to make a living. So I decided to put myself in this environment where let me just learn as much as I can. Let's just see what happens. I also interned with a graphic designer that worked on a lot of menswear apparel, um, and we worked on stuff for Supreme and Undefeated and Stussy. 
a lot of these larger streetwear brands that I personally was a fan of. However, I got a chance to step behind the scenes and see how this process actually works from a graphic designer's point of view. So how do we kind of come up with a concept? How do we create it? And how do we work with vendors and tech packs, if you guys are familiar with that term? Um, so pretty well-rounded and also worked part-time in Union Square. I worked at Journeys when Journeys used to be there and Puma selling retail um, sneakers. So I did a lot. I really, really was really good at overwhelming myself. And so it made my transition from student to freelancer pretty easy. Because if you think about it, when you're in, in college or university, you're dealing with a lot of different deadlines. You're dealing with a lot of different timelines. And you also have to wear a lot of different hats, right? If you have your own small business, if you're a creative yourself and you work on your own, you have to deal with your accounting, marketing, uh, social, invoicing, chasing down invoices, sometimes legal, going through the contracts on your own. So it was very overwhelming, but thankfully, I kind of indirectly already set myself up for that. Uh, and this is a quick slide of how my work looks like now. Um, I'm not going to stay on this for too long, because that's not really why I'm here to talk about my work, per se. Um, and you guys can always check it out online. But really, what I aim to do is tell stories. So really, a combination of what I'm doing today is everything from illustration to graphic design to still working in fashion. Um, I also learned how to design websites, thinking about UI, UX, um, branding, and I also started my own um, publication as well. And it sounds like it's all over the place. And I have a really bad, hard time introducing myself to people because what happens is it's just people almost want to put you in a box to pick one thing. But really, I'm just a storyteller. I tell stories on different canvases, whether it's a product, or a digital experience or a social media campaign. I'm here to tell a brand story and be able to really help them visualize and develop a language for themselves. And there's also hashtag bun, which is um, with the rise of social media, specifically Instagram. Um, everyone was kind of capturing their experiences like live journaling. Um, and so I <laughs> decided to use my hair bun, because I always tie up my hair. Because in New York, you're always running around with a backpack, and you're wearing layers, and it's humid, and you're sweating in all these weird places. So I always put my hair up, and I kind of used my hair bun as this way of leaving a little stamp of who I am. And as my career kind of grew, social media also became this huge platform for me to continue to not only share my story, but also discover that I really enjoy photography, um, and also, of course, showcase my work uh, within the digital space. So. Um, yeah, but I really want to talk about problems and solutions. So kind of problems that I saw when I was, when I pretty much got to a point where I've done a lot of great creative work, worked with a lot of, a whole spectrum of amazing clients in different types of industries, but where do I want to go from here? And so I think the intent and discussing the intent and the motive be behind why we work is very important. So for me, um, Couple years in, just having worked with different industries, I noticed a lot of interesting things. One was the fact that in the world of health and wellness, a lot of times it's very limited. And let me backtrack a little bit. The reason why I got into health and wellness was because my body was breaking down at 22. I was hunched over, and we all know this. We're hunched over. I invested in a Wacom tablet, but it kind of got rid of my wrist pain. But I was hunched over a computer for hours at a time hitting different deadlines, because I love what I do. But when we love what we do, we're willing to invest much more physically into what we're working on. We pump in caffeine. We're not drinking enough water. In fact, we might be holding our pee sometimes, which we know what that's like to be able to meet a deadline. My body was breaking down, and that got me into going to the gym, because I realized I need to commit myself to just step away from the computer. Going to the gym got me into eating better, and then it opened up this world of wellness. And then I realized no one within my industries was talking about this at all. No one's talking about mental health. Now it's trendy, but I'm talking about 10 years ago. No one's talking about mental health or physical health or fitness in an interesting way. There was men's health and women's health as a publication. And even those conversations were oftentimes limiting. Sometimes it felt elitist. Sometimes it felt so far away for you to obtain to because the person that's on the cover already has these super amazing abs and it doesn't make sense. And also, people kind of think in a very bracketed way. But what I essentially created, which I'll go into later, is Undo Ordinary, which is a health and wellness platform 
working with the creatives within my community to repackage and break the algorithm in terms of how we talk about health and wellness. Because if we love what we do, and if you've ever spent any time at the gym or you run, that same mentality that we have where it's like, let me push myself, I can't do this today, but let me keep trying, I might be able to do it tomorrow. That's the same exact practice that we have when we're working at our computers and working on our craft, right? We all started somewhere. In another sense, I also noticed that there was a lack of diversity. And of course, that is such a hot term nowadays. But really, again, going back to my roots, having grown up in such a diverse environment in Queens, New York, I also noticed that in the creative scene and in the wellness scene that I often spent time in, that there was a lack of spectrum of color. There was a lack of different bodies and making people feel comfortable when it comes to the wellness space. Um, not to mention, even working, shifting topic a little bit with advertising and marketing, having spent some time in different agencies, people, who, groups of agencies that are working on huge campaigns for global companies lack diversity in the room, lacking proper representation. Now, I'm just not speaking on the idea of inclusion and people of color, but more so the whole entire spectrum and having that proper representation across the board to be able to work on authenticity and proper messaging. So taking my background of um, the work that I've done, one big thing that I really focus on is to be so good that they can't ignore you. Because oftentimes, especially nowadays, we're always talking about being a woman, being a person of color. And this might be a dicey conversation, right? But these are hot terms. And I, and I think this is a stage for me to address that. I've chosen to focus on honing in on my skill, on my craft, on my community so well that when people see my work, they see my work only and they judge me based on that. Not because I'm a woman, not because of how I'm dressed, not because of the color of my skin. And so that's been my endeavor for the most part. And here's a great example. This is basically what I've decided to do. With We Ascend, it's the creative agency that I started with a business partner. It's called We Ascend under the idea of rising up with my community, with the creative community, with the amazing people that I have surrounded myself with and met with and admire even through social media. Um, and so the agency is really built on just tackling bigger projects. I've been able to work with a lot of amazing clients. I'll get a direct call from the MLS or the NBA or Adidas because they need certain jobs fulfilled. But instead of me just collecting the check to fulfill the, the, the ask, what if I brought in everyone? What if I brought in my community so everyone can get paid? Because not everyone may have the same social media platform but have amazing skills, skills to be able to fill the client's needs. And so that's one way I've been able to solve the problems that I was able to see. And this is a great example of how some of our visual language looks for Undo Ordinary, and really just pooling um, talent from the folks that I know, um, and really changing the way we talk about health and wellness. I mean, look at that, right? You've never seen a health publication that's really talking about um, circadian rhythms, sports, um, even just nutrition in this type of visual language. In the same way, we have a biannual uh, print publication in this day and age, which is amazing, and it's designed to be evergreen. So it's not really based on season, it's not like spring 2020 or whatever, it's really based on different themes. Our most recent one, the one that I have up on this slide, is about sleep and restoration where we learned about circadian rhythms, balancing our light, especially all of us work, I'm assuming that a lot of us work with digital computers. We're spending a lot of time in front of blue light and how that actually affects our sleep cycle. And the biggest reason why I invest in my health and invest in this information and want to share it with the people around me is because I want you all to keep doing what you're doing. I wanna keep doing what I'm doing. I love my job. I wanna keep doing it for 20, 30 years if I can. Um, but in order to do that, I need to understand this machine that's my body. And in that same sense, I let that passion help me design and curate the type of work that I'm working with. And so I want to make it taste good, I want to make it look good and have it be digestible and interesting for the people around me. And in addition to the magazine, we also do different types of activations um, around the US. Uh, just through friends, really, just through friends and community and people who also share that same interest. So we're really just aiming to get people out there and do things different. 
and change the way we look at these things um, when it comes to health and wellness. For example, we did an event at this Pilates class, which typically, if you just think of Pilates, you think of skinny women or really, really fit older men like Joseph Pilates. Um, but we did an event that was called Producers in Pilates. So we got our friends that were different DJs and producers for Miguel, Macklemore, a lot of very famous, well-known hip hop um, and R&B producers and brought them into the space. And we put them on megaformer machines and we had them work out. And they were so shocked because normally the branding and visuals of these types of establishments don't invite certain communities. It can feel very elitist. Therefore, our goal has been really to ch kind of change the way we talk about these things and repackage it. And really what lights my path, what keeps me going, right? It's really this fearlessness attitude, this importance of community, and also being open to the heartbreaks that are involved when it comes to just working in the creative space. But for me, it's really about painting this whole picture. It's a very diverse, uh, diverse, expansive, intense picture of connecting all of these dots. But I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I think, um, I think I'm kind of off to a pretty good start. And that's it. Thank you all.